Hey guys, so we are on chapter 12 in my website, and if you're taking a look at your textbook, we're in chapter 20.1 and 20.2, or not 20.1 and 20.2, we're on chapter 20.3 and 20.4. We're going to be talking about lymphatic cells and organs. So let's start off with lymphatic cells. There are lymphocytes, B, T, and natural killer, killer cells. And then there's your macrophages, and then there's your reticular cells. And if you don't remember what reticular cells are, you're probably going to have to go back to chapter 4. But um, let's take a look at this picture, and we'll figure out later that this is actually a an, encapsul an en e -N, encapsulated lymphoid um, organ. And as you can see, there are reticular cells right here, and these will secrete reticular fibers to create like a little network of fibers. And then right here, there's your macrophage, and right here are your lymphocytes. So now let's talk. Let's um, overview some things to know about lymphatic tissues and organs before we start talking about them specifically. Um, they're classified by two things. Um, they're caps. They're classified by um, the arrangement of their cells. So if they're um, if they are spread out diffusely, or if they're um, spread in a distinct manner, or if their cells are encapsulated, if the if the organ or tissue is encapsulated by connective tissue. Um, the tissues um, are MALT, and that it stands for um, mucosa-associated lymphatic tissue, or lymphoid tissue, some, one, one or the other, and tissues in your mucosae. Now, those sound very similar, and we're going to talk about them next, so don't worry about that. I'll differentiate between the two. And then there are lympho lymphatic organs, and those are lymph nodes, your thymus, and spleen. So let's talk about your lymphatic tissues. So the lymph tissue and mucosi, um, these um, have the regular lymph cells, but these cells are spread out diffusely in the lamina propria, not in, not, um, not in a distinct manner. And they're also only found in the GI and respiratory tract, and that's what differentiates it from malt. Um, Malt has nodules, um, and those are areas where um, white blood cells and lymphatic cells will um, congregate. They're also called follicles, and I'll be referring to them as follicles um, more from now on. And <clears throat> they're, they're also found in the lamina propria of many mucous membranes, but their cells are spread in a distinct, dif um, distinct discrete manner. And they're also found in more places than the lymph tissue in mucosae, but they're found in the GI, respiratory, and urinary tracts. And they're, in they're put in places um, strategically that um, pathogens would enter. And these are called, as I, uh, as I said before, MALT stands for mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue. Now, there are three of them. There's Peyer's patches, or three types. There's Peyer's patches, and those are or there are Peyer's patches, and those are in the ileum, I believe. I'm not quite sure if it's the ileum or jejunum, but um, just know that they're in your small intestine. And then there are tonsils. There's one adenoid that would be like right behind your nose, right behind your cheek, one or the other. And then there's two palatine tonsils. Those would be on the walls of your um, mouth. Then there are two lingual tonsils. Those would be below your tongue. And there, there are two tubule tonsils which would be um, right behind your um, <clears throat> pharynx, I believe. Now, tonsils, if um, they swell because, um, they can swell because um, pathogens can make them swell. And it can be more of a problem than a helper. So that's why tonsils have to be removed sometimes. And then there's your appendix, and that's beneath um, the cecum. And we haven't gone over the digestive system yet, but your cecum is actually the first part of your large intestine. So here's like a little microscopic view of lip malt in general. So it, right here, it would be in the uh, lamina propria, the second layer of your um, mucosa. And as you can see, right here is the malt, and it actually has follicles, so areas where your white blood cells would congregate, and it would be very distinct. And it would, and um, th as I, and as I said before, they're also called nodules. But I'll be referring to them as follicles more from now on. <clears throat> so, let's talk about encapsulated organs. Um, they're surrounded by a dense connective tissue capsule, 
and there are three of them. There's your thymus, lymph nodes, and spleen. I actually want to mention where the um, unencapsulated tissues would be. So your pyrus patches would be right here um, on your small intestine. Your appendix would be right here below the cecum, and your um, tonsils will be up here. Now, <clears throat> then there's your thymus, which is an encapsulated organ, your spleen, which is an encapsulated organ, and as you can see, there are many diffuse um, bean-shaped things, oval-shaped things, called lymph nodes, and we'll be talking about those next. So lymph nodes filter out lymph. That's their main job. Um, they destroy pathogens as well because um, they have l lymphocytes and macrophages and such and such. And um, the B cells within them produce antibodies. Um, so I also want to mention, even though we'll learn this in the immune system video, that B cells can turn into plasma cells and memory cells. Plasma cells can also secrete antibodies, and B cells or memory cells just remember the antibodies so that just in case um, another um, the same pathogen it encounters the same pathogen. But um, anyway, uh, its structure contains a dense connective tissue capsule, trabeculi, a cortex, medulla, medullary cords, which are basically um, macrophages and um, reticular cells that extend from the medulla to the hilus, and the sinuses. So let's take a look at this. Um, this is in your textbook, by the way. Um, afferent lymphatic vessels, which are vessels that go into the <clears throat> into the um, into a lymph node, go in, go in this way. And then there are efferent lymphatic vessels, which go this way. I don't think I mentioned that in our um, lymphatic vessel video. I just wanted to mention that now. But let's talk about your lymph node. So as you can see, there's a capsule of connective tissue surrounding it. And then right here, this middle portion would be called your cortex. And then here, there would be something called your medulla. And I always remember, remember medulla is, you, is always in the middle. Medulla is in the middle. Um, and that's also, that's also what I use to memorize for um, the medulla in long bones. Anyway, so as you can see, there's a medullary cord that extends to the hilus right here. And the hilus is basically the terminal point of your lymph node. It's where the lymph goes out. So, and I want to mention that sinuses, so they basically are the path of your lymph. So first it would go into your subcapsular sinus, and then I believe there's a cortical sinus as well here. It just doesn't say it, but there's also another, it'll go into your cortical sinus here, and then after that it'll go into your medullary sinus. And also I want to mention that these little protrusions are called trabeculae, or trabeculi. And anyway, that's pretty much it for your lymph nodes. So now let's talk about your thymus. It's a bilobed organ, and it has capsules around each organ. And there are also trabeculi, which make lobules, smaller lobes within your, lob, um, within your lobes. And um, within your thymus, there, um, in your lobules, there are, there's an outer cortex and an inner medulla. And it gets smaller from puberty onwards. So, but as you grow from a child to um, um, your adolescence, you get it, it grows. It gets bigger. Your thymus gets bigger. Excuse me. And it becomes it it gets around forty grams at its largest once you're um, once you're at the peak of puberty. And as you get older, it gets smaller and smaller. By the time you're sixty five, um, or in your sixties, it'll t it'll become around six grams. Um, it consists it consists of many T cells and epithelial reticular cells. Now, epithelial reticular cells are different from regular reticular cells in the sense that they don't secrete reticular fibers. Instead, they have little protrusions, little processes off of them, and those little processes will um, intertwine with the processes of other, um, other epithelial reticular cells to make like a little network. Um, and also, epithelial reticular cells secrete hormones for thymus maturation. Anyway, so the purpose of this thymus is to promote T cell maturation. So it, it basically all it does is allows T cells to mature. That's why T cells are called T cells, because they mature in your thymus, and thymus starts with a T. Um, because it's only used for that case, for that purpose, um, it has a blood thymus barrier, right? And that blood thymus barrier 
So there's a bunch of blood vessels surrounding your thymus, and that allows um, pathogens not to intrude your thymus because um, your T cells need to mature before they can actually um, destroy those pathogens, those um, antigens, I guess. The blood thymus barrier prevents antigens from coming into contact with the maturing cells. Anyway, the last thing we, the last organ we need to talk about is your spleen. It's on the left side of the body and below the diaphragm. It has a capsule and trabeculi, and it also has um, splenic veins and arteries. And it does have efferent ves vessels, but it does not have afferent vessels. Um, things to note, areas to note, are um, your red and white pulp in your spleen. So white pulp has reticular cells and lymphocytes, and red pulp has uh, venous sinuses filled with blood that, um, that are filtered through uh, splenic cords. And your splenic cords are made up of reticular cells, uh, macrophages, and lymphocytes. All of the lymphoid cells, basically. And <clears throat> the functions of the spleen are to filter blood, terminate old blood cells. So your blood cells, um, your erythrocytes mainly, when they go into your spleen, their heme group, the heme group from hemoglobin is removed from them. And that causes, that starts off, initiates the um, path of erythrocyte death. Um, and um, it's also a reservoir for blood. It, it's a place where blood can be and circulate. And um, it also uh, gives immune response since there are, um, since the majority of lymphocy um, lymphoid cells are white blood cells. And it's also involved in hematopoiesis when you're developing. Remember from my video on, um, uh, on blood, uh, development of, um, of, um, uh, of blood cells happens in the liver, spleen, and bone marrow when you're developing. And once you're mature enough, um, once you've matured, um, your bone marrow takes most of the job. Your red bone marrow takes most of the job of hematopoiesis. Um, Anyway, so here's a picture of your spleen. So right here's your splenic artery. It's hard to see behind your splenic vein, but um, the red one is the splenic artery. This is your splenic vein. There would also be afferent vessels coming out as well. And the red stuff is the red pulp, and the white stuff is your, um, looks like it says splenic trabeculi here, but I think that's white pulp is in here because it's not connected to the capsule. And... <clears throat> I think that's it, but, uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it for today, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.